Now I love my EPP foamy models, they bounce well and a lot of fun to fly. Today though I thought I'd try something a little more traditional, reverting to a ply and balsa kit. This one comes from Minimum RC and is the L19 Cessna. There is a history of kit building in the family. This is my father's Aero Modeler's Annual from 1948 and a couple of photos of the gliders that he made. Although traditional materials, I'm going to be using uh, Sino to put it together. I will attempt to make it radio control by putting in this F949 receiver and servo module, which spookily is also out of a Cessna, although I bought it as a spare part for this very project. Without further ado then, let's start the build. I should be following the instructions which you can download from the project page. As always, links in the description. Being laser cut, all we have to do is to carefully remove the pieces. Not like the bad old days of having to hack the pieces out of the balsa with your trusty craft knife. However, there are some little tabs left which may need easing. It doesn't seem to be too bad on the balsa wood, but on, on the ply it's a little bit tougher and you may even have to use your craft knife just to cut through the tiny tabs that are holding the piece in. These two pieces make up the front cover of the hood and the ply piece has to sit one millimeter inside of the balsa piece to allow you to fit the balsa sheeting over the top. This is the balsa that is going to create the hood when it's bent across. I'm going to use that rather than trying to measure one millimeter. That looks good to me just there. Now to tack it in place with some Sino. Trying not to Sino your finger at the same time. So that's not going anywhere now. To keep things nice and square, I use my metalworking square here to make sure that the parts are at right angles before gluing. The next part I think is going to be tricky, forming the cover over with the balsa wood here. As in the instructions, I've dampened it with an old flannel and I'm going to attempt to, to glue it round. I've already glued it along this edge here. Let's see how we get on. One side at a time. Let's hit it with some accelerator. Probably using much too much glue there. But it's very difficult to control as you can imagine. And there we have it. Not too bad for my first attempt. This side has cracked so I'm going to fill that with some Sino as well. And overall it's a result. Here I've assembled the landing gear and this will be pointing towards the front of the aircraft. On the top here you can just see that the small bumps left by the tabs that secure the plywood when it's being cut. As the centre portion of the wing is going to sit here, I think it's a good idea just to take those little bumps off so that it will sit flush. I know using a file on wood is not cabinet maker's cricket, but hey, whatever works. Now nice and flush. Also I've put a dab of Sino on the back of the screws there to stop them coming loose. For the next step I've supported the frame and held it in place with a little magnet, glued the front part on, and now this part is going to go in here. It's important in the next step to put these wing support frames in first because once the piece is glued on the end clearly we're not going to be able to fit them. Additionally there's a rather cryptic note in the instructions that reads the two diaphragms in the middle of the wing strut are not glued to the balsa wood to which I understand that when we put these in like so we do not glue them. They would just simply sit like that 
and now can go ahead and glue. Once I've glued this back together, that will fit on the end there. Another tip when you're gluing with cyanoacrylate is to put things onto a little piece of baking sheet. That way the part will not stick to the paper. And finally now this piece can be glued into place. Having glued the reinforcement here, the next instruction is to crease along the line here, but not too aggressively, it's only such that you can gently bend the fuselage to shape. Should be sufficient. Things are beginning to take shape now. I've fitted one of the fuselage sides. It's uh, quite an entertaining and tricky business, getting all of the little tabs lined up and, and glued, but it definitely starts to, uh, to, to strengthen up once you've got those things in place. Now it's just a question of fitting the other side. I've assembled and placed the piece in the middle of the fuselage here, also this at the front. This will support the, the front when that's bent over. I managed to knock the piece off of the side here, so you need to be really careful with this. And lastly, the reinforcements under the front of the motor mount here. I didn't have very much luck with the dampened cloth method for bending these sections. What I ended up doing was to wet them quite thoroughly and then hold them in place with some clamps while they dried and that seems to have worked much better. As you can see, these are not glued in place yet. They're, they're just ready to be glued and that makes for a much neater job, I think. Probably because I'm in a very dry environment, the damp cloth wasn't sufficient. Time now to glue those pieces in place. With this side now firmly stuck down, just going to moisten the other part. As I say, I guess it's due to my dry environment here. I have to apply a lot more water to be able to bend the sheet without it breaking. Just give that a minute to soak in and then bend it and clamp it in place. Things are really taking shape now. I think this is pretty much the end of the fuselage. Put the centre part of the wing on there. My repair to the piece that I've broken off went reasonably well. The next challenge is the little magnetic hatch. It doesn't give you any information on how this works. You get these two little pieces what you have to do first is to glue the two pieces together like so and then the tab on here locates into the little slot in the plywood here by the by the legs. Go ahead and do that. To make the hinges for the elevator and the rudder it just says to use some clear adhesive tape and that's it. I'm going to use a technique that I use on other models of much larger size which works well for me. I like to use this sellotape diamond tape. It seems to be very strong and holds up over time. I'm going to need two pieces, approximately 11 millimeters. We take the two pieces of tape, turn one over, and just overlap them by approximately the width of the material, around about one millimeter. I've just temporarily put a piece of tape over there to keep it together. Now we pass this piece through it to be about there. Turning it over, just pull that tight. And push that down. Now we're going to do the opposite at this point here, so that we have one going that way and one going that way. I'd forgotten that for some reason these hinges work best in threes, so here on the rudder you can see I have one in the centre and two smaller ones on the outside there. On the tailplane here you can see I've added a third one just on the, on the edge there. And they're all very free moving, which is great. Next I have to decide which way to put the tailplane. And that's going to be dictated by the servo on my receiver module uh, as to which side that activates. So I need to check that. I'll be using my Tyrannus to control the model and that's using the multi-protocol module in the back there. 
If you want to know more about that, I have another video dedicated to that subject. And now if we do the elevator, we can see the servo on the on the right looking at it here. Therefore, this will be my rudder function. Now I know that the elevator side of the tailplane needs to go on this side of the of the model. Now we can put the tailplane and rudder in place. I've assembled now the tailplane and the rudder. In addition, added the control horns for the surfaces as well. Now I felt, especially on the tailplane, that this part here was, was very weak. What I've elected to do is to use some very fine fiberglass mat, which I just stipple with uh, the cyano glue, and that makes a very strong reinforcement. Okay, it's gonna add some weight. I'd rather have it secure similarly on the on the rudder there. The next part is to assemble the wings which is very straightforward it's just the two ribs on each side then it says to install them on the model. Now I'm not going to do that as you can see my workspace is somewhat limited and they would just simply get in the way of the next part that I wish to do which is to connect the control horns for the control surfaces and make sure that my little module, which is hiding inside here now, is set up correctly. Now, these little neodymium magnets are incredibly strong. To my cost, I found that when I installed it, I could not for the life of me get it out again without destroying it. I've elected to add a small piece of ribbon just on the edge there and I've put it underneath to give a little bit of separation from the magnets because believe me, once that is in there, if you don't have some way of, of removing it, it is not going to come out. As seen before, this is going to be my elevator servo and my rudder servo. And there are these supplied carbon rods that we need to make up to connect those. That's what I'm going to do next. The attachment to the servo horns is just this little bent wire here. I feel that they fit better with the vertical piece of wire passing up from below, which is tricky to attach. The best idea is to actually remove the servo horn. A little trick for removing servo horns of any size really, uh, I use an old blunt pair of side cutters. You simply get underneath the servo horn, press gently, give it a little wiggle, it will pop right off. And there we can see it's a fairly simple task now to attach the servo horn. We can now just pop it back on. With the receiver linked to the transmitter, make sure that your servos are centered before connecting the other end of the control rods. Here we can see the arrangement. It loops through the control horn there and is just held onto the end of the rod, which you need to cut to length, as I say, when the servo is in its center position and that's simply heat shrinked on there. You can get a small amount of adjustment by opening or closing this little hoop here. Now it's time to turn our attention to the motor assembly. In the instructions there are no, no clues. We'll have to figure it out ourselves. This reminds me somewhat of Monty Python's lesson on how to play the flute. Well, you just blow in one end and move your fingers up and down the outside. Clearly we have two ply pieces which are the motor mounts and when we look at the back here there is a, a square receptacle so those are going to fit in to there. I would suggest not gluing these together before they're in the housing there. The motor clearly is going to go in there but it's certainly not going to go in there easily. There is a pinion and spur gear arrangement. The pinion will fit onto the motor and the spur gear will be driving the propeller. No particular identification on the propeller, but this side here it will be facing forwards. This end looks as if it's prepared to be pushed into the plastic there. The, the knurling, if that's what it is, doesn't reach far enough back to include the spur gear. Also, there are these little bushes that will fit in either side to support the, uh, the shaft there. Finally, there's this little piece which is going to push on and probably snug up to the other side of the bushing there. Let's see how I get on. 
The first thing that I did was to push the little bushings or bearings into the top there. That was quite straightforward. Secondly, I put the pinion onto the motor. Pay attention because this end of the pinion is closed, so that must go towards the, the motor. Then I heated the housing up with a hairdryer, got it nice and warm, and that made it easier to push the motor and pinion through, just guesstimating how far the actual motor shaft you can see is quite a lot longer than it needs to be. Finally then putting the spur gear on and pushing it onto the shaft from the opposite end to the knurling here until there was sufficient space at the back to put the little retaining piece on. There's enough of the knurled section there to push just through to the end of the propeller boss. Give it a quick test. I won't really know which is positive and negative until I put the propeller on and connect it up to the speed controller. That will be next. The build is finished now. Installed the propeller, the motor is running okay. Power will be provided by just a single 300 milliampere hour cell and that's going to sit under the front cover there and bind it with the transmitter. A good rudder movement and elevator and of course the throttle. Clearly it's keen to get off the ground. All up weight, including the battery there, 37.72, so 38 grams. And that's even lighter. These little guys come in around 56, 57 grams. That's even lighter than that, which means that it'll only be suitable for very, very calm days or indoors. All is ready now waiting for some fine weather and hopefully an end to the lockdown situation, which means that not even able to fly in front of my house. Very sad.